Rabbi Omer and Shavuot, and personal friends of the family as well, and welcome Rabbi Shapiro. Thank you very much, Chaim. Um, I, I just want to open with a, a personal note about the Rav. No, I, there's nothing I can add to what many people in the room know about Rav Soloveitchik. I just want to say something about my indebtedness. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. You're tall. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, I just want to say something about my personal indebtedness to Rabbi Halbfinger, Zechon Olivracha. When I came to Boston and started working in Maimonides, I was a young kid, and he was one of the established Rabbonim, and in fact, the head of the Beit Din in Boston. And he took me under his wing, he mentored me, he was very supportive of my professional and personal growth. And I always feel grateful to him for that. And I want those of you who didn't know him to know that he was highly respected. I'm sorry, thank you. He was high, thank you for doing it. He was highly respected by Rav Soloveitchik, by the Tolner Rebbe, by the Boston Rebbe. They, really, they all had great respect for him and supported his efforts because he was an Isha Emet. He didn't compromise his principles, he played it straight, he consulted with them on everything. And Rav Amar, those of you who know a little bit about what's been going on over the last few years with Geirut and the recognition of Geirut that was done in the United States, so Rav Amar has a very short list of Bote Din in the United States that he's willing to accept. And Rav Halbfinger's Geirut or Geirushin were never questioned by the Rabbanut in Israel. And there's a reason for that. So, Le'ilui um, Nishmato, I also want to simply tell you that the, I, I chose, I made some pedagogic, curricular decisions, and I say this, I was going to say it anyway, but seeing some of the people sitting here uh, who know much more about this topic than I do, so I just want you to know, I made curricular decisions to stick to the Derech HaMelech. And I was like, I want to accomplish something with you tonight. I want to define two mitzvot, the mitzvah of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim and the mitzvah of Zechirat Yitziat Mitzrayim. And I want to show you, this is all in the name of Rav Soloveitchik and Rav Chaim Brisker and the, the Tolner Rebbe. It's none of it, it's my own Torah. But I want to show you the relationship of the two mitzvot to one another. And then there's a technical thing at the end. So I'll show you in a second the outline. If you look at the outline on the page here, you have Roman numeral one and two on side one. And on side two, you have Roman numeral three. Um, we're going to talk briefly about the underlying sources for each of these two mitzvot. And it's much easier to teach in Israel because I can assume that those of you in the room who are looking at the sources, I don't have to translate word for word. In Boston, that takes a lot of time every time you try to teach something. So we'll go quickly. And then I'm going to share with you Roman numeral two, six individuating features. And I hope there'll be time, if we move through this together efficiently, then there'll be time for part three. If not, you'll do it on your way out. I respect the time frame of this evening, so let's move. Um, number one, there are two mitzvot. V'higadeta levincha bayom ahu leimor ba'avur zeh asa Hashem li b'tzaytim mitzrayim. So that is understood as the basis for the mitzvah of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim. I caution you again, that's a simplification. It's a little more complicated, as I'll show you in a minute. But for our purposes, and for the purposes of a basic Havana of this topic, that is an honest, comprehensive digest. Second pasuk is in Devarim, at the end of Parshat A. Lo tochal alav chametz, alav refers to the Korban Pesach. Shiv'at yamim tochal alav matzot lechem oni. And I'm just reminding you to think about lechem oni and its various evocative meanings. Ki bechi pazon yotzata me'eretz mitzrayim. And all of this, lema'an tizikor et yom tzitcha me'eretz mitzrayim kol yamei chayecha. So here, this pasuk is understood, again, by almost all Rishonim and many Midrashim, um, as the basis for the mitzvah of lizkor, 
Yitziat Mitzrayim. Right, let's posit those two at the outset. We'll come back and define them clearly. Let's just, these are the Psukim, the Rambam, because I spent many years in Boston, so we do things by quoting Rambams. So the Rambam is Hilchot Chametzu Matzah, Perak Zayin Aloha Aleph, Mitzvat Asei Shel Torah, L'saper Benisim Beniflaot Shen Asu Lavotenu B'Mitzrayim, Beleil Chamisha Asar Benisan. That's also complicated, but the one interpretation I want to focus on now is that the Rambam is telling us the mitzvah of Sipur, Yitziat Mitzrayim, is to be performed one night a year on the evening of the 15th of Nisan. Shene'emar, so you already have a clue. Now you see that this mitzvah, Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim, is limited to one night a year. Shene'emar, now there's an ellipsis there. So you should always be suspicious when somebody puts an ellipsis in. So I am leaving out a very important clause in the Rambam, which is very complicated, and it's based on a Midrash, and the Rambam's derivation for the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a little more complex than I'm letting on now when Rabbi Adler is shaking his head. That's why I'm, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm being honest. But again, what we need to walk out of in, in, in a half hour is, v'higadita levincha bayom ahuleimor, ba'avur zeh, now, where is the night of the 15th mentioned in that pasuk? It's not. Correct? So it's the word zeh. That's the midrashic. And this, is, this is Hazal. So you point. You remember it, the Seder. You point and you say, And people uncover the matzah and point to it. So Hazal tie in the mitzvah of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim to the physical presence on the table of the matzah and the moror. Those mitzvot we know have to be performed. So we know now that Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim is defined as being performed on the night of the 15th. Then the Rambam, when he gets to Zechirat Yetzias Mitzrayim and Hilchot Kriyat Shema, surprisingly, in other words, had I not done this, you would ask yourself, okay, where is he going now? Where are we going to find the Rambam talking about the mitzvah of Lizkor Yetzias Mitzrayim? And what kind of mitzvah is it? And how often should it be performed? So it's in Hilchot Kriyat Shema, Perek Aleph, Pa'amayim bechol yom korein kriyat shema be'erev uvaboker shenemar uvishach uvikumecha. Fine, that's a topic. You can build a whole shir around that, but we're all familiar with that. Halacha gimel afal pi she'ein mitzvah tzitzit no heget balayla korein ota balayla. What? Korein ota what? We read the third parsha. Vayomer Hashem al Moshe the Bar Yisrov Yasula em tzitzit al kanfei v'leim. So you might say, why are we doing this? Layla loves man tzitzit. So why bother to recite an extra parsha? So the Rambam tells us, again, based on Chazal, based on the Gemara and Brachos, that you do recite it at night, even though mitzvah tzitzit eina noheget. Why? Mipnei sheyesh ba zichron yitziat mitzrayim. Namely, ani Hashem alokeichem, asher hotzeiti atchem eyaretz mitzrayim liyot lachem alokim. That's the reference, that's the quickie, reference to Yitziat Mitzrayim. And that's the option that the Gemara in Barachot chose amongst other candidates for what to read in Kriyat Shema in order to fulfill the daily, we're beginning to sense that, the daily mitzvah of Zechirat Yitziat Mitzrayim. O mitzvah, back to the Rambam, lehazkir Yitziat Mitzrayim bayom uvalayla so in other words, and that's why we add it as a third parsha to Kriyat Shema, both morning and evening, because Kriyat Shema is twice a day, Bishoch Becha Uvikumecha, and since it's a mitzvah to mention Yitziat Mitzrayim twice a day, so we link it, right? That's the, that's the logic here, that's the construction. Shenemar Laman Tizkor, Es Yom Seizchom Eretz Mitzrayim, Kol Yemei Chayecha. Now, you know that when you see the word kol, you gear yourself for Chazal to come along and say that the word kol is always a ribui, is always a basis for including something like a hyperlink to something beyond pshuto shel mikra, as it strikes you on face. 
So what are we going to do with that word kol? What does it add? Laman tiskor es yom tzeischom eretz mitzrayim. Sorry that I lapsed into Ashkenazis, okay? Yemei chayecha. So kol is lerabo mashahu, And we'll see that in one minute. But the Rambam says, ukriyat parshiyot elu al seider zeh hi hanikreit kriyat shema. So kriyat shema is a tripartite in Boston, they use words like that. A tripartite mitzvah. A, we pledge allegiance to the Rabona Shalom. We, we acknowledge his, his existence and his unity, right? Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. And our relationship with him. Then we acknowledge that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the lawgiver. He sets the parameters of our life. And that's how as we say in the Birchot Kriyat Shema, that's how he expressed his love for us, by giving us the Torah. So that's item number, that's component number two of this Pledge of Allegiance. And then there's a third. That would be enough, you would think. Who is God and what's our relationship with him? But the third part that Chazal felt is essential is that, as the Midrashim and Bereshit Rabbah talk about at the beginning, what does God do since creation of the world, right? So he doesn't just sit there musing or looking down upon us and what, what Professor Horowitz was talking about, getting frustrated with the, uh, with the problems, with the challenges of the modern Orthodox community. And, he's, and he also is Mizaveg Zivugim, yes I know, but, and that takes a lot of time. But he also intervenes in history for our benefit, as evidenced by Yitziat Mitzrayim. So when we say, Ani Hashem Elokeichem Asher Otseiti Yadchem Eretz Mitzrayim, etc., I am affirming that I believe in and pledge allegiance to daily, twice a day, to the God, the one God, who is not passive, but who has a special relationship with us, and he will intervene on an ongoing basis. And okay, now's not the time, right, to start a three-hour discussion about Hester Panim and so on, but... God will somehow orchestrate a government from Medinat Yisrael, and God will solve the Palestinian challenge sometime and whatever, right? But we believe this. We, we live with this conviction. So that's Zechirat Yitziat Mitzrayim that we perform every day. So I just want to show you. I could skip the next two sources, logically, but because they're in the Haggadah, so this is by preparation for Pesach, let's take two minutes. There's a Mishnah in Brachot, Taf Yud Bet, Amud Bet, and it's in the Haggadah, Mazkirin Yitziat Mitzrayim Baleilot. So this was a Machloket Tanoim. Some said you should do it only once a day, Maspik, Laman, Tiskor, Esyom, Seisham, Eresusayim, Kol Yamei Chayacha, once a day. And others said, no, you should do it twice a day. So you have to offer proof. Omar Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, Harei Ani Kiven Shivim Shana. Again, that needs a five minute digression, but we're not going to go there. Look at your commentaries on the Haggadah. Or go back to Brachot, to the Mishnah, Hareani Kiven Shivim Shana, Velo Zachiti Shete Amer Yitziat Mitzrayim Baleilos. What does he mean? He means, I never convinced my friends, Lo Nitzachti, I'm fortunate to say, I never convinced my friends in the, in the Sanhedrin, my colleagues, of the halachic imperative that I believe in to say it twice a day. I wasn't able to Lashachneya Otam. Ad Shedrasha Ben Zoma. Until my friend Ben Zoma came along and he offered the clinching proof. Shanemar, Lamant, his Korazian, so I may as I am. Call, should have put that in bold letters, call Yemei Chayecha. Is Yemei Chayecha, which would have sufficed, Hayamim. But the word call is Lerabot, Halelot. Oh, so Ben Zoma made this drasha, which convinced everyone, not everyone, but convinced a lot of people and, and May, thrilled Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah that we should say, we should mention Yitziat Mitzrayim twice a day. Because the word kol includes an additional mention beyond Laman, Tizgor, kol. Okay? Clear? Clear. What did the Chachamim, that there, were, there was opposition still on the floor. So the Chachamim omrim, no, that's not what the word kol adds. Chachamim omrim, Yemei Chayacha refers to Ha'olam Hazeh, meaning this period in history, this extended period in history. And kol, and some nuschaot have yemei chayecha, not, but it's clear that's the same puzzle, kol lehavi limot ha-moshiach. 
that there's an eschatological projection here, that certain, that certain mitzvot or certain aspects of our culture, let's leave it at that, um, will be extended into Yemot HaMoshiach. And this is one of them, that in Yemot HaMoshiach, people will continue to refer to Yetziat Mitzrayim, but once a day is enough, because the, there's a mutual exclusivity here. The, the, the rules of the game for Chazal were you can squeeze one drusha out of a word, but you can't keep squeezing three, four drushot out of it. So once Benzoma used up coal to say, lahavi haleilot, so that's it. So it means what? That this mitzvah will expire b'yamot ha-Moshiach. With the advent of Mashiach, it'll no longer, we won't be governed by this mitzvah. Whereas the Chachamim say, no, we're not going to impose nighttime on you, so we still have the freedom to use the word kol, because we haven't used it up for nighttime. So we say it refers to Yemot HaMashiach. Okay, so just please remember that according to Ben Zoma, this mitzvah of Zechirat Yitziat Mitzrayim, which is done twice a day, because that's what he wants to do with the word kol, is going to expire, is going to terminate with Yemot HaMashiach. Is that clear? Okay, that's where we are. It in turn, this machloket in turn is based on a very interesting parshanut issue in Yirmiyahu. Here's the pasuk. Lachain hine yamim ba'im ne'um Hashem. Velo, this is a, a baraita, the Gemara in, on, on daf, in Brachot. On, uh, I'm sorry, the Gemara there in Brachot, in, uh, on Daf Yud Bet, Amid Bet, on the bottom, after the Mishnah. So the Gemara quotes this as an elaboration of the machloket between Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah and the Chachamim. And it quotes this pasuk. Lachain hine yamim ba'im ne'um Hashem. Velo yomru od, chai Hashem, asher ha'elo ha'pinei Yisrael me'aretz Mitzrayim. People will no longer say, I swear by God who took us out of Egypt. That'll be old hat. No one's interested in that anymore. There's more exciting interventions in history that everyone is still enthralled by. Namely, Kiim, people will say, Chai Hashem, Asher Helov, Asher Hevi, Etzer Abet Yisrael, Me'eretz Safona, Umikolo Aratzot, Asher Hidachtim Sham, V'yashvu Al Admatam. Right? Like we talk in our generation, we talk about Milchemet uh, Hashichrur, Milchemet Sheshet Hayamim, the Aliyah, this Aliyah, that Aliyah, from Russia, from Ethiopia. You know, but how many times do we get emotionally aroused by thinking of Yitziat Mitzrayim? So Yirmiyahu says, listen, you're going into Galut, you're going to lose the Beit HaMikdash, bad times are coming. That was Nebuch Yirmiyahu's role in life to, to keep urging them to do tshuva to avert it. And then he said to them, okay, so you didn't listen to me, so now we're on an irrevocable course of destruction, but, but we have an eternal commitment from the Ravona Shalom, so he's going to bring you back. And when he brings you back, it's going to be with such excitement that Yitziat Mitzrayim will pale into insignificance. Correct? So that's what Ben Zoma says. And the, uh, and the Chachamim say, no, that there's another Pasuk, by the way. You see it says, Hashvei Ted Zayin. So the Mechilta quotes this other Pasuk in Yemiah, which is very similar, but I wanted to keep it to two sides, so I didn't include it. You look it up in Tanakh. And, uh, and the issue is, will Yetzirah Zayim not be mentioned at all? Or will we say, listen, we've lived through exciting times here in the last 65 years, and you know, it, we also remember Yitziat Mitzrayim with gratitude, and Yitziat Mitzrayim was the paradigm, and everything else follows in its wake. It's sort of like, if you want to think about it in personal terms, in psychological terms, so I'm looking around the room, so everyone here, everyone here, including, no, not you, Liliana, but how old are you? You're fourth grade, oh, so not you. But everyone here has been through Bat Mitzvah already, Bar Mitzvah, and high school graduation, as I look around the room, uh, many of the people in the room are married. And at some point you start, you know, after, like, you're still Nama, you're still excited about your high school graduation, right? And looking forward to finishing Bar Ilan someday soon. Um, so, and the, the Bat Mitzvah is sort of ancient history, right? It's all Yachasit, you know, it's all relative. Um, I mean, did you finish the thank you notes already? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, otherwise, the, 
once you get married, so the wife, the husband, they talk about, oh, you know, five, five years ago, in the last five years, since we got married, this and this has happened to us, right? Or since we bought the house, this, and this. there are always reference points in one's life, but they're the more recent ones that were more determinant in where you are today as a result of a decision or an event a few years ago. For Miriam and me, it's a, we made Aliyah, Baruch Hashem, a year and a half ago. So uh, we, uh, we tell you, yeah, we have 43 wonderful years in Boston, but the truth is our arrival in Boston is sort of fading into distant history. I said to Miriam two weeks after, really, two weeks after we got here, I said, you know, it feels like we've been here forever. Baruch Hashem, really, it was wonderful. Having three children here advanced, uh, Yehuda Shalach Lefanav helps. Okay, so here we have two mitzvot. One mitzvah, Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim, which has to be performed one night a year on the 15th of Nisan, and one mitzvah has to be done every day, twice a day, because we paskin, the halachic tradition, adopted the view of Ben Zoma and Rabbi Lazar Ben Azariah, which means, I'm just reminding you, because to throw out uh, something we'll come back to, if not, you'll do it yourself, but I'll tell you what, how to do it before we leave. Um, which means that since we're using kol, yemei chayacha, to include leilot, and that's why we say the parsha at night in Ma'ariv, which we'll do soon, and I'm going to stick to schedule, so we'll have a Ma'ariv on time. So, therefore, we're telling ourselves that we understand that this mitzvah will expire, will terminate, liyamot HaMashiach. Okay? That's where we are. So what's the difference? Good. So now we know that, uh, like here, six individuating features. So Reb Chaim Brisker used to list four. I purposely wrote these headings. You can take this home. You'll have like an outline. You don't have to take notes. You can review this on your own and talk about it at the Seder if you want. So Reb Chaim Brisker used to list four differences between these two mitzvot. Number one, daily vis-a-vis -vis the night of the 15th of Nisan, right? We don't have to belabor that. Once a year, vis-a-vis -vis every day. Next, number two, that one is fulfilled by a mere mention. Ani Hashem Elokeichem Asher Hoseiti Yadchem Eretz Mitzrayim Finished. Yoytzeg Even. We fulfilled our obligation. Hopefully you say it with kavana, not just mumble the words, but feel it a little bit, be grateful. But that's all you have to do. Vis-a-vis -vis an elaborate narrative. Now again, I'm going to run through this. You all know it. Let's just remind ourselves of the sources. Matchil Mishnem Psachim, Matchil Beginut, Umesayim B'Shevach. Right, the whole Haggadah is built around this, and the Gemara says, "My bignut." So there are two opinions: Rav and Shmuel. One says we focus on the religious development from idolatry to monotheism, and the other one says you should focus on the political development from from bondage, from slavery to freedom, and we do both. And then Rav Gamliel, Haya Omer, Koshlo Omer, Shloshit Worm, Elo Bapesach, Lo Yotsu Yedecho Vato. So we explain what Pesach is, and what Matzah is, and what Mara is. And this is all part of an elaboration or an elaborate performance of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim. It's not enough to just say, oh yeah, God took us out of Egypt. I remember that. Or I read a book about it. I saw a movie, Exodus, whatever it is. It's, no, you've got to talk about it. You have to elaborate. And this is how you elaborate with the details in the Haggadah, the Baal Haggadah provided us with a very convenient text to help us get started. The Rambam in Hilchos Chametz Umatzah Perek Zayin, Mitzvah Tasei Shel Torah, L'saper Ben Yisim Niflos, V'chol HaMa'arich B'Devarim She'eru V'Shehayu, Harezeh Mishubach. Right? Okay? V'chol HaMa'arich Harezeh Mishubach. And the same thing in Aloha Dalit, again, he, Kapit, he recaps Rav and Shmuel, these two foci, which are both in the Haggadah. And again, he emphasizes for us the Chala Mosif, again, based on the Mishnah, the Chala Mosif, Huma Arich, Midrash, Parsha Zu, Reza Mishuba. So, number two distinction between the two mitzvot, said Reb Chaim Brisker. And by the way, the Rav tells us in one of his yard site, the Roshot, in Shiurim, Lezecher Abamari, in a footnote, that every year, Rab Chaim would sit down at the Seder and start the Seder by recapitulating these four differences as a way of getting people to focus on the two mitzvot. So daily versus, one, uh, once, daily versus once a year, and a quickie mention versus an elaborate narrative. Number three, soliloquy vis-a-vis -vis dialogue. What does that mean? The first one you do by yourself. You can be sitting in your living room and say, Ani Hashem Elokeichem Hashem Tzaytiyaz Chaim Eretz Mitzrayim. Correct? You don't need an audience. You don't need a dialogue. You don't need anybody else. 
the Pesach Seder, the, the, the context, the framework for the fulfillment of Sipur, Yetziat, Mitzrayim, is designed by Chazal to entail a community effort, dialogue. So, Tanu Rabbanan, Chacham, Beno, if his son is wise, then show alo. Then the son will be able to generate questions. A two-year-old kid, a four-year-old kid, won't be able, unless his kindergarten teacher drilled into him, Anishtana, right? He's not going to know how to identify what's different about this night and to set a rhetorical backdrop for Sipur Yetziat Mitzrayim. But if Chacham Beno, then show If he may know Chacham, then Ishto show alto. So the son gets priorities. This is not a politically correct or incorrect issue. This is just the Yigadita Levincha comes first. Vim Lav, who Shoel Liatzmo? See? You have to rhetorically ask the question. Say, Man, Ishtano, Alay Lo, Zemik, Alay Lo, Shoel Lo. And then say, the answer is, the answer is, right? Abadim Ayinu, Lefaro, Vimitzroim. Vafilu Shnei Tamide Chachamim, She Yodim Bilchot Pesach. So they could do. Uh, you know, remember when we were kids, you used to say like, oh, joke number 23, and you were supposed to laugh because you know what joke number 23 is. So two Talmidei Chachamim, all you have to do is, oh yeah, Perak Arvei Psochim, or, or the Mishnah, the Avkuf Yudalid, whatever, Kuf Tezvav, you know, whatever you want to do. No, Afilu Shnei Talmidei Chachamim, Sheyodim Bilchot Pesach, Shoalim Zelazeh. So that's another difference between Yetziat Mitzrayim, Zechirat Yetziat Mitzrayim, and Sipur Yetziat Mitzrayim. Number four, this is a technical issue, which looks like we might have time to at least identify. Um, that, s listen carefully to what I'm saying, because it's not obvious and it's technical, it's legalistic. The mitzvah of Zechirat, Yitziat Mitzrayim, is according to the Rambam and many other of the Monei HaMitzvot, is doesn't get billing as one of the 613 mitzvot. It's not, you know, there are many imperatives in the Torah, right? There, there are many more times than 248 do we have do this, do this, take this initiative. And many more times than 365 does the Torah say don't do X, Y, Z. But Chazal had, I mean, the, the tradition, there's, a, there's a, actually it's a, it's a very fascinating topic, and there's a whole literary history of what are the criteria by which you identify what's on that official list, what, what got highlighted in yellow marker as the 613. But the Rambam, from his silence, we infer that it's not an independent mitzvah. Whereas Sipur Yetzias Mitzrayim is. So I, but I showed you, we looked at the Rambam, right? The Rambam talked about it. But look back, look at the top of the page. Rambam Hilchot Kriyat Shema. So the Rambam says, the last two lines of that section, U'mitzvah lahazkir yetziat mitzrayim, by, thank you very, very much, U'mitzvah lahazkir yetziat mitzrayim, bayom uvalayla, shene emar, and then he says, U'kriyat parshiyot elu, which parshiyot? All three, all three, Shema, thank you very, very much, Shema v'hayayim shamoa, and Vayomer Hashem Vasulahem Tzitzit, Kriyat Parshiot Edu Al Seder Zeh, He Hanikreit Kriyat Shema. So, in other words, Kriyat Shema is an inclusive mitzvah which has three components. As I say, the identification of the Rabbonah Shalom, the assertion that we acknowledge his hegemony over us and that we're obligated to be Shomrei Mitzvot. And number three, that we affirm that he intervenes in history on our behalf. And that's all part of So one of the components is to mention Yitziat Mitzrayim as one of the manifestations of God and his relationship to us. But according to the Rambam, it's not a separate mitzvah. You see the words of the Rambam in Hilchot Kriyat Shema. You should just know that the Smak, the Sefer Mitzvot Katan, this 13th century, another one of the Monei HaMitzvot, Rabbi Yitzchak Mikorbei, he does count Zechirat Yetziat Mitzrayim as one of the Taryag Mitzvot. Okay, so in other words, it's not Muskam al Yudei Kol, but the Rambam and many others did not count it. So that would be another difference, said Rabbi Chaim every year at the Seder, that here we're dealing with a mitzvah that's a formal mitzvah, 
And here we're dealing with a mitzvah that's not an independent mitzvah, but it's part, it's one of the elements, one of the markivim of other mitzvah. Then came along Rav Salavechik, and he added, just so this gentleman's kind gesture doesn't go to waste, thank you very much again. Um, the Rav, Rav Salavechik, added two more. One is in the footnote, that same footnote, and one is additionally known, that there's a difference between merely mentioning vis-a-vis -vis the obligation to express gratitude and praise. Again, Ani Hashem Elokeichem, Asher Yotzeis Yeschem Eretz Mitzrayim, and then you're off to Emet Ve'emunah Kol Zot, or Emet Ve'yatziv Enachon, and uh, <laughs> if you daven in Minyanim like we all daven in, so everybody's already looking at the clock and wondering, you know, why the Shliach Tzibur is taking so long to get the Chazar Sashats and so on. Nobody is um, wallowing, no one is uh, obsessing about Yetziat Mitzrayim. But said the Rav, listen, talking about Yetziat Mitzrayim, the night of Pesach, Chayav Adam Lira'ot et Atzmo, Ki'ilu Hu Yatsami Mitzrayim, you don't just leave Egypt and not feel a surge of exuberance, of immediate gratitude to the Rabboni Shalom. So you burst out in song, Oz Yashir Moshe, Vinei Yitzrael, Yashir Azos. Right? You can't just passively walk out. So that's part of the mitzvah of Sipur Yetzias Mitzrayim. It's a requirement. If you can really muster that sense of identification with that generation and feel ke'ilu hu yatsami Mitzrayim, right? These are all words from the Haggadah. Um, how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, it's okay. How many of you have the minhag at home uh, to march around the table with a bag over your shoulder or things like that, right? These are all designed, these are all designed to create some sense of spontaneity, of immediacy. That's what we're talking about. So that's what you have in these sources. Oh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> no matter how much time you spend, there's always a mistake. Those of you who, who teach know that. Here, Mishnah Masechet Psachim. The mem got left out. Okay. Anyway, Becholdor. But you see the sources. You're all familiar with it. We say it. Nagada, Lafiha, Hanachnu, Chayavim, Laudot, Lalel, etc., etc. What do you mean, Velanu? I wasn't there, right? It's thousands of years later. No, Velanu, because Ani Chayav, Lirot, that's me, Ki'ilu Ani, Yatsati, Ha'erev, Mimitzrayim. So therefore, Lanu. Hotsiyanu, Me'abdut Lecherut, and so on. So that's a fifth difference. That's a Chirat Yetzias Mitzrayim. You don't need to go into a song and dance. But here, you have to say Halil, and that's what we do at the Seder. Number six. Rav Salavechik added this as another difference, okay, on top of Rav Chaim, his grandfather's four, he added number five and number six, mere reference vis-a-vis -vis the dimension of Talmud Torah. In the Haggadah, this a lot of people just are not aware of, that's all. In the Haggadah, part of what we do is we have a, a learnathon. We have a leil iyun. We learn some Torah. We don't just talk about Yitzhak Mitzrayim, but we fulfill a mitzvah of Talmud Torah because we take the Midrash, the Sifrei, in Parshat Kitavo, Arami Oveid Ravi Vayered Mitzrayma, where the Midrash Halacha takes the Psukim, those five, six Psukim, <laughs> that the person who brings Bikurim says, and interprets them, expounds upon them by reference to the Psukim in Shemot, right? That's what we do. So that's Talmud Torah. You're learning a Midrash. And in fact, Rav Salavechik, on his own, it struck him one day that this strange formulation, Baruch HaMakom, Baruch Hu, Baruch Shanatan Torah Li'amo Yisrael Baruch Hu, and then Keneged Abba Abba Nim Dibra Torah, and that's the four psukim. That, what's this Baruch HaMakom, Baruch Hu, Baruch Shanatan Torah Li'amo Yisrael? What does that sound like? Sounds like Birchat Torah. So that's what the Rav said, that this is a Birchat Torah because we're about to sit down and learn Torah. And then, later, he discovered that the Ritva had said it already, and he was thrilled. Baruch Shekivanti, you know, he was excited, he was gratified to know that he had thought of an idea that the Ritva already had said earlier, the Shivali Alekit, because, you know, it's, once, it got, once it got into the mainstream, but the Rav, uh, the Rav was such a genius that he, you know, he looked, he looked at the Gemara and generated a lot of things on his own. Seriously, he didn't always, Rav Adler, I hope it's, it's, Rav Adler, it's not disrespectful to say this, that the Rav, 
didn't, me, I'm insecure. I don't know anything unless I read the books. So I have to look at the Gemara, and then I look at this Rishon and that Rishon, and I go to the library, and I look at the Barilan disc. Are you sitting here? Where's, where's the gentleman? Where's, yeah. where's the gentleman? He came down or not? From the Barilan? No? It's upstairs. Okay. Anyway, you know what I mean? I, and then, okay, then I try to take notes and sort of marshal all the evidence in front of me. The Rav just spun it in his head. But it had turned out that he was machav into a ritva. So that's another difference between Zechirat Yetzias Mitzrayim, which is just you recite the Pasuk, and Sipur Yetzias Mitzrayim, which has all of these components now, right? It's exciting. You tell the story, you have to tell it elaborately, and you have to burst out in song, and you learn Torah alongside of it. Now, Rabbi Tversky, the Tonda Rebbe, the Rav's son-in-law, Mariva Rabbi, Karmi Horowitz and I were Zoha to spend many, many years. <sighs> not, so much. Um, not just learning, but like he gave us our life, and he, he formed our whole personalities, our religious personalities, and contributed to how we raised our children. So he out that don't just focus on the differences between the mitzvot, but talk also about the complementary relationship. And I'm going to end here, by the way. I'm not going to go into Roman numeral three. Okay, you'll have to do that on your own um, because of the time constraints. But um, Rabbi Tversky said as follows. There's a ha'amek davar, and he connected this to a nitziv, a comment of the nitziv, on the pasuk, l'ma'an tizkor et yom tzeizcha me'aretz misraim kol yamechayecha. Says the Nitziv, Laman Tizkor, you can look it up, it's in the Hamek Davar, in that source. Uchamo sheha'av misaper lebeno ma'aseh sheyesh bo musar. You have a family, so all of us have this, you have family lore about when Safta came to Israel or came to America from the old country and did this and this and you know, look at how our grandparents picked themselves up, they were penniless when they came. Yeah, every family has its own traditions. So, it takes a while. Once you get say, remember like when you were a kid and your aunt or your grandmother would start talking and you started to roll your eyes because you knew, oh my God, there they go again. We're in for the half hour story. Like she's going to start telling the story again. So, hasipur aruch, kidei sha'a, u bechol yom mazkiro beremes kal kol hasipur, so often, doesn't mean B'chol Yom necessarily, but many, many times during the year, you're, oh yeah, when our grandparents came, you know, or yeah, that generation that came from Europe and built themselves up, and you refer to it elliptically. But B'chol Shana, Choseir Umesaper Mechadash, maybe on the anniversary night, on a birthday, on Mother's Day, on Father's Day, Mesaper Mechadash, Kedei Sheyaaseh Shoresh Bilovavo. Kach Mitzvah, Lasot sipur aruch baze halayla. But of a chol yom, sagi bezechira levad. Beautiful in psychological insight of the Nitziv. That the mitzvah of zechirat, yitziat mitzrayim, is that periodic mention, daily it turns out, of a very important principle, but you don't have to be ma'arich, you don't have to belabor it. We all know what we're talking about. But you know what? If we go for five years and we just keep mentioning Yitziat Mitzrayim, we're going to forget the details. So once a year, you delve into it, and then on the basis of that once a year, the daily mention is more meaningful. But also, and here's the Chachma, that on the basis of the daily mention, the once a year becomes enriched. If you only thought about it once a year, it, it, it wouldn't have the same emotional impact. And Rabbi Tversky used to compare this to Tisha B'Av. Let's be honest. It's very difficult to suddenly, and I know it's not suddenly, there's three weeks for Ashkenazim and for Sephardim, there's a little less time, but there are a few days build up, and there are halachas, Hilchot Avelut for the nine days, or from Prov Shrodesh, Shavuah Shachalbo, but then, self called self, suddenly you got to sit down on the floor and cry and read Eicha and read keynotes. We don't understand all of them. And it's difficult, and it's really difficult to emotionally lehizdaot im ador shel chorban abayit. It's difficult. It's a challenge. We try. The halachos try to help you, you know, ev ev evoke that sentiment. But then there's the rest of the year. So you have in Shulchan Aruch, Simen Aleph, Ra'ui l'chol yerei shamayim she'yehei meitzar v'doeg al churban beit right? Okay, I won't ask how many 
people say tikkun chatzot, okay? But you know, you, you understand what they're talking about. And then you're all familiar with Simon Tov Kuf Samach, which is at the end of Hilchot Tishabov. Hilchot Tishabov is in Tov Kuf Nun Aleph Bed Gimel Dal. And then in Tov Kuf Samach, La Sot Zecher Lechurban, which you all know. Here in Eretz Yisrael, actually, you see it. People leave Amo Al Amo at the entranceway to the house. In Chutz Laaretz, the Aruch HaShulchan justifies why in Chutz Laaretz they don't see it so much. Um, but uh, you have that, you have them in Hagim at a wedding, and so on, right? There's a whole, there's a Gemara, and Baba Bat, the end of Cheskat Abatim, and a Simen and Shulchan Aruch. So the point Rabbi Tversky made, based on, uh, by association with the Nitziv, as a parallel, the Nitziv is talking about Zechirat Yetzias Mitzrayim and Sipu Yetzias Mitzrayim. Rabbi Tversky's association was with Tisha B'Av, Every day, periodically through the year, every time you go to a wedding, every time you walk into a house of your friend in Israel and you see that there's some unfinished section of the wall, it reminds you that we, I mean, we, I don't want to get political now, but we, we still have work to do with the Harabaya till we, till we reach the point that we're ready to say, you know, Baruch Hashem, that we've arrived at the historic goal. Um, but then Tisha B'Av comes and we have this intensification of it, which in turn makes the breaking the glass at the wedding or the Amo al more meaningful because you just had Tisha B'Av, so you remember what this is all about. Okay, um, I'll throw out to you briefly, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, think about it. Depending on one's relationship with one's parents, so if it's hopefully good, then Mother's Day and Father's Day is meaningful. It's almost superfluous. But if, God forbid, there are strains in the family, then buying a Mother's Day card or bringing home a bouquet of flowers is a hollow gesture and unfortunately doesn't address the pain that's going around the family dynamics. Anybody here? Family therapist? So it's all right. This is, no, it's a sad reality of life, but uh, zehu. So that's it, folks. I, I'm going to end here, really, because of time. So I just want to recap for 20 seconds. So what we've done in parts one and two, and I knew this might happen, okay? So we, in parts one and two, we've done... We've identified the biblical, the scriptural basis, the psukim underlying Zechirat Yetziat Mitzrayim and Sipu Yetziat Mitzrayim. Then we looked at the Rambam as a way of succinctly seeing the rabbinic formulations, correct? And we saw the Machloket Tanoyim about whether Zechira is Pa'amayim B'chol Yom, including Leilot, or no, and then it would be Limot HaMashiach. And what we've done now is to review the Rav, Rab Chaim, and the Rav, six distinctions between the mitzvot, and we've noted the Tolna Rebbe's uh, emphasis on trying to see the relationship between Zechira and Sipur based on the Nitziv with his beautiful, meaningful suggestion of the association with Tisha B'Av and the Halachas all year round. Roman numeral three, we'll have to leave for another occasion, take it home, look at it over Shabbos with someone... Everybody in Israel here, in Manana, you'll, you'll be able to figure it out yourself. You'll be able to work it up yourself. Thank you very, very much. Thank you again.